Hey guys, welcome back to the Golf Podcast. This is episode number 408, and I am so excited for our guest, which we're going to bring on in a second here. We're going to be talking to Rob Labritz, and I truly believe that this is one of the biggest feel-good stories yeah, in down. the game of golf mm -hmm. in 2021, without a doubt. Here is a guy who has been so focused. He's been a club pro, PGA club pro, for 30 years, you know, three decades, and he has made his dream come true, recently punching his... Uh, ticket for the yeah. PGA Champions. He's tour. got that tour card, man. I, I'm just so excited for him. We 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 had a lot of fun watching him as uh, the the incredible things he did at the Champions Q School event, where he outright won the thing. He had to finish in the top five. He outright won it. Yeah, I mean, talk about <laughs> just being in the zone, clicking a ne next level. And we had the chance to first meet Rob uh, about six months ago last summer. We were at Glen Arbor uh, filming some content, and we linked up with with Rob. Uh, and you know, you can see a picture of him him there if you're watching this on, on YouTube or on Facebook. And um, we got to do have a little fun on the on the 19th hole. But I'll never forget just just seeing, and you can just tangibly feel how driven and focused without Rob a doubt mm -hmm. was uh, at, at achieving that goal that he's had and he's rob don't don't you know not to take anything away this is not like a, a complete cinderella story out of the dark rob has done some incredible things he's played in eight pga uh tour uh majors he's played in the yeah, pga tons of wins under his belt on yep. the local events mass open rhode island open this year Exa westchester open exactly when you google his name and you see him staying next to brooks kepka with with holding a trophy of his own himself. from beth mm -hmm. Page black you know that it, he's a stick right yeah, i mean yeah. rob, rob has done some incredible things but I, I, he's just one of those guys that when you speak to him, uh, you just kind of hope that some of his own enthusiasm and motivation rubs off on you. Big time. He's Big just time. he's yep. just such a uh, he he not only of, of himself a motivator, but he's a very supportive of of the other golfers around him. Uh, the, the little opportunity you've gotten to even take some swings with him and the little things we've done, you can just tell how supportive he is, and just uh, it just shows and speaks volumes of how he is even as a coach because he does you know that's part of his line. You know, a lot of we think t you know tour pros are guys who are out there grinding it, playing every week. You know, Rob also is in there a teaching professional. You know, he's got his students he's teaching. So he's had to, in a lot of ways, split his time. And at the same time, not only growing the game through helping others, but putting that time it takes for his own game right. to get to the level that he's gotten to, to play at this level, to, to punch his card. It's incredible. It's incredible. And sprinkle on the fact of how amazing of a family man this guy is. And he's got an 11 month old uh, so he has a lot on his plate and he still stays focused, which has been, always been inspiring to me uh, just to watch him and, and to see all that love and support when he won from all those people just shows you yeah. how loved this guy is within the golfing community. So it's a joy to have him on the show. Yeah. And you're going to find out why in a second when yep. we bring him on, you get a, a taste of, of Rob's personality. So let's not make you wait any longer. Let's go ahead and uh, dive right into our interview with Rob Labritz. All right, we are pleased to have on the golf podcast Rob Labritz. Rob, welcome to the show. Gents, nice to be with you again. It's great, great having you. And and Rob, you did it. You earned the tour card for the Champions Tour. You made it first. I want to know how are you feeling? I mean, by now it it must have sunk in. I I think it's going to sink in when I first tee it up. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, every day the smile just you can't wipe it off my face. Uh, I'm up here in New York, so hitting golf balls out of the bay and putting in the bay is. Uh, I want to get on some golf courses, but uh, I think it's going to be above 40 today, so maybe we can get out on the golf course a little bit. Yeah, it does look nice out there today. And, and we've just been seeing that the media whirlwind around it. I mean, ha have you even had a chance to get back to all those inevitable, I'm sure, DMs that you have of of people reaching out and congratulating you? Because it, it's it's just an inc incredible accomplishment. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny. I got through all the texts and all the emails, and if I missed anybody, I, I, I'm sorry. I tried to keep it as organized as I, as I could. Uh, the DMs I'm still actually going through. Um, <laughs> wow, there's a lot of there's a yeah. lot of a lot of support out there. It's really really cool. That's really and it's true because he did actually texted me back too. I mean, it was like at 11:30 at night, like three days later. But you got back to me, so I appreciate that. It must have been a <laughs> lot, but that's that's so cool to see you uh, to do that stuff. So that's great. Yeah, the good news is you've got a lot of people obviously who've been rooting for you. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 unbelievable how many people I've heard from, you know, God across the globe. It's been um, from Ireland to Australia to I mean, it, it's been really, really cool. So, uh, you know, I'm glad that um, I'm glad that people find some some, you know, some hope and some fun and some smiles out of this because that's uh, that's what's cool about it, you know. 
for sure. No doubt about it. And I think it's definitely is one of the biggest feel good stories in the game this year. And, and I, I want to kind of, we'll dig into that. We'll kind of start in, in a way from the beginning. And, and I want to start with where, where we met when we met about six months ago. Um, the first thing that you kind of said to us, and, and it's, again, this will kind of go back to how focused it's, how clearly focused you've been on, on achieving these goals, but you talked about, you know, you wanted to win that, the P the senior PGA championship. And now you've secured that champions tour card is, is winning that major still the next big goal for you? Yes. I mean, winning, winning out there is the next big goal for me. Uh, that's the, that's the next, that's the next goal. Gotcha. And, and so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean look, I, it's, 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 a, it's huge as accomplishment of punching the card, but there's still a lot of work to do. So kind of what, what goes into that goal for you? What is, what is kind of next steps for Rob LaBritz? Yeah. I mean, so, you know, right now it's the holidays. So I'm, I'm kind of taking, uh, you know, some time off from just, you know, playing on a golf course. I'm up here in New York and spending some time with my family, um, which is well needed because next year, you know, I'm going to be uh, on the road a good amount. Uh, and then, but I'm hitting golf balls and, and chipping and putting every day. So, uh, you know, I've been working out, been up in the workouts. I have a little bit more time right now, um, which is cool. So uh, trying to get stronger, more flexible, uh, like we always do. Uh, my, my trainer, Curtis Jackson, is hitting it hard with me. And of course, I love my Peloton. So <laughs> we're, we're all good on that. Um, and then I'm going to get down to Florida, um, you know, probably the first week in, uh, uh, in January. Uh, I'll play a bunch of uh, PGA of America events, uh, senior stroke play, uh, the stroke play, uh, the senior junior championship with a friend of mine, Peter Ballow, um, and, uh, you know, a couple other pro members. And that kind of brings me into, uh, into uh, you know, the week of uh, second week in February, which is when the, the tour starts. So I'll be good and ready to go. By then I'll be rested. Um, I'll be, um, I'll just be charged up to play golf and competitive golf. So uh, that's the plan. And, and while I do all that, it's, you know, when I'm on the road, just to keep the fitness level up, keep the practice time up um, and, uh, you know, work as hard as I can because <laughs> yeah. here, here you are. And now you can't, now you're not going to sit back now. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. No, absolutely. Now's the time to dial it up even more. And, you know, I want to touch on your schedule and how that all works in, in a minute. But I want to recap for our listeners who don't know the story. In fact, going back to November, when you, you advanced to the final stage, which was then played in December, TPC Tampa Bay, uh, you went out there and the top five were going to secure their cards. And not only did you secure it, you won the damn thing. I mean, so I was, me personally, I was excited checking PGA Tour um, uh, leaderboard on the app all four days watching you. I noticed, you, I think you shot even par on day two and you fell down the leaderboard a little bit. And I was like, oh no, I was getting nervous for you. But I want to hear from you. What, what went through? I know you played lights out that week and everything was clicking, but what happened on day two coming back to day three? How do you bounce back from a so-so round like that? Yeah, I mean, the conditions were a little bit uh, windier that day. So, mm. uh, and I didn't strike my irons um, as great as I could. I had a, long, a lot of long putts. Uh, I wasn't missing greens uh, in the wrong spots. I was missing the greens in the right spots. I was curving the ball in the right direction, but it wasn't as solid as I like to because of the wind. Um, and, uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I, I thought even par was, you know, a good, good round, uh, just to, if you can shoot even or under par all the time and make more birdies and bogeys, you're going to be good. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, we had some nice weather the next two days and, and, you know, I, I played, played solid golf, played with some great players, got to see some, some awesome games. I mean, you know, Tom Gillis and David yeah. Branshaw mm -hmm. and Tung Chai JD. I mean, these guys are awesome. Yep. Uh, and, and yep. awesome dudes on top of it. Um, so it, it was just a really cool experience to get out there and, and, and play well. Yeah. And you know, I, I want to know at what point in round four, did you say like, Hey, I'm going to win this thing or did that ever even happen? I mean, how do you keep that composure walking down the final couple fairways? So there were no leaderboards. Um, I, I knew I was playing good, but mm -hmm. I, you know, guys, honestly, I, I've trained myself over the years to not under, not know whether I'm under par or over par or wherever mm -hmm. I am. I just, mm -hmm. I, I just hit one shot at a time and then, and I write the score down after every hole. And sometimes I mess that up too. Right. And at the end I add them up and, and, you know, thank God, God, the other guys have their uh, scorecards too. So I could check it against them because I, I make mistakes all the time. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable. Um, so I asked Todd, I knew I was playing decent. My caddy, Todd Luigi, uh, on the 16th hole, I said, all right, Todd, 
where are we? There were no leaderboards out there. Uh, yeah. And I knew we were playing okay, right? Uh, and the whole group was playing okay. So, I mean, I think Branshaw just made five or six birdies in a row. I mean, mm -hmm. and Tung Chai JD's in there, you know, hitting, making birdies. It's great. We're, we have about 50, you know, people following us and, and, you know, we're just hitting all these quality shots. It was, it was awesome golf to watch. I mean, yeah. Uh, but so I asked Todd and he says, um, he goes, you're at 17 under. And I, I looked at him and I said, are you sure? <laughs> and he, he goes, yeah. He goes, yeah, you're seven under today. And I was like, I was like, okay, well, how far out of fifth are we? And he goes, he says to me, he goes, you got three. And I was like, oh. Okay, so I'm three shots clear with three to play. I better play some golf. He goes, no, you got a three-shot lead. And I said, three-shot oh, lead? I was like, okay, with three to play. And then the internal part of me went, holy cow, just take a deep breath and keep doing what you're doing. Get back in your 40 seconds. And then you just you turn it back into the 40 seconds and you focus on that next shot. And you're just doing what you got to do with that next shot. And then you turn it off. And when you turn it off, I'm not thinking about the outcome. I've already seen the outcome, right? But I'm, but I'm thinking about just hitting that next shot because yeah. the next shot, it, that shot that you're on, the one that you're, has to be the shot. Yeah. I mean, so, I, it has to be. <laughs> There's no other thing. Talk you to me about that. You can't throw any of them away. Tell me about this 40 seconds. Yep. I'm very now, interested now I'm because, <laughs> because the, you, there's so many of us who would very easily slip into the mistake of changing our strategy hearing we're up by three. So how, how, what, tell me about that. What is the 40 seconds that you're referencing? Well, so yeah, so up by three. I mean, I don't even think of it that way. I didn't. I didn't think of it that way. I thought of how many clear I was in fifth place. I guess right, right, right. right. Uh, and he wouldn't tell me. He's like, just make three pars and shut up. Right, uh, but right. The 40, <laughs> but, the, but the three, the forty seconds, honestly, is something that I've guess I've just I've kind of tapped myself into doing. It's something I believed in over the past you know twenty years or so, where I I just try to focus for I, when I get to the ball. You know, you, you're walking up to the ball. You feel the terrain. You see the ball. You, you know, you're processing all this information, you know, the, the wind, the, you know, the downhill, the lie, the, you know, all the stuff that's going in the dew, the humidity, all that stuff that you've been hitting shots over your whole life. You see the shot, you see the flight, you see where the flag is, you can see what the, what you have to offer. I mean, all this stuff just happens in your brain. And then once you pick your line and see your starting point and hit the shot and curve it the right way, then wherever it goes, you it, it could be close to the flag. It could be over the green. It could be once the ball stops, I just, I just click it off and I think about something else. Mm. I don't want to talk. I don't want to think about anything else, but that, because that was all the, all the power that I had to put into that shot. Right. I don't want to waste any other power that I got on whatever negative thought or positive thought, or I don't want to get my rhythms going high, low. I just want to play. Yeah. I mean, over yeah. the years, that's what it is. It's just staying cool and playing. I mean, it, you're going to get upset and I have gotten upset in the past. Don't get me wrong. Right. But as I get older and better, I, you know, I just, I just, you focus on the shot and then you, it's not the do or die of my life, man. It's, uh, although it seemed like it when I qualified, uh, cause it was a dream come true, but yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's just the shot and then turn it off. So you don't waste that energy. You have, it's like 24 minutes of focus in a four hour round. Right. right? So you, 40 seconds times 70 shots, that's 28 minutes. Right. So, you know? It's yeah. a great way to think of it. I think is I think so many of us more amateur golfers get overwhelmed at the idea that of having to try to hold our focus for four hours, five hours if it's a long round, you know. And and we think nowadays in in a world where it's harder and harder to hold our focus, it seems so daunting. But I like what you're saying. It's just having those the almost that switch where you can click it on and, and click it off so that cumulatively you're not hold having to hold that same level of focus for all that time because that's just something that's it's too daunting of a task yeah and you're and you're enjoying your surroundings yeah. i mean you're looking around you're on the golf course i mean you guys know you guys travel to all these awesome places too i mean there's no better place than on the golf course with exactly. the beauty and the and i mean come on you know yeah. And For speaking anyway, of yeah. the golf course, I mean, one thing I don't want to discount at all, you know, we talk about how well you and some of the others were playing out there in these incredible scores. I don't want to discount how difficult that course was. In fact, it's, it's kind of funny. We got a message in our Facebook group when we messaged saying that you would be on the show this week. And uh, one, of, one of our listeners, Kyle Lindsay, said uh, TPC was playing nasty, too. He said, I took one of the pros out for a practice round the day before and the scores Rob put up were just insane. <laughs> so can, can you speak a little bit about 
about that, how the course, I know you played incredibly well, but how, how the course was set up that week. I know you've also, we talked about it in a second, you've played some very challenging setups, the Kiowa, Beth Page Black, but how about the course itself? Yeah, the course is a, it's a great layout. I mean, it's a, it's a great layout. It needs a little bit of TH, uh, TLC. They, um, you know, they, they, they had a lot of rain when they overseeded. So, um, I guess the overseed didn't really take. So we played ball in hand for the four days, um, which was, which was good. Um, what a test of golf though. The mm. greens were rolling fine. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the wind was kind of up and down, uh, down three days and up on that Tuesday. So, um, you know, the course played awesome. I'd, I'd go out there again and, and I hear they're going to, you know, put some money into into redoing it and, and bringing it back to uh, uh, an even better uh, uh, place to play too, which is awesome. That's very cool. And so, speaking of courses, and and one thing, obviously, it's been the big story. We've seen it all over the the, the Champions uh, Tour social media and everything, everything with you, you, you know, making your way onto uh, the tour itself, but. Uh, it, this is in a lot of ways not your first rodeo either and and i want to talk about that because you've played in you know eight pga tour major tournaments um and most recently kiwa which which you showed us a couple pictures of playing it was the playing the longest in major history and some of those pictures from the tee boxes were just incredible but um even going back to 2019 beth page black you know, here's a course that, you know, being local guys, it, it has its its own legendary status of how difficult it is. We can all think of the, the sign when you approach the first tee of, of, of how, you know, just kind of daunting and telling you the <laughs> yeah. warning that's there. And, you know, we talk a lot about how now you take that Beth Page back is a difficult course. Now it's, it's set up for a major condition. So they've got that rough grown in. They've got it, you know, tipped out. We, we hear about, you know, Brooks Kepka that year, setting the course record under those conditions, 63. But you know what? You weren't that far behind them. You had a round of 69 out there, and you ended up winning the uh, the low for the uh, the PGA. Oh, the low, the low club pro. The low club, mm. low pro. Low so, club pro. Yep. Uh, just incredible. Like I said, I mean, Thank in you. a lot of ways, this is this is not your your first rodeo when it comes to high caliber tournament golf. But tell us a little bit about that experience in 2019. I'm very interested, you know, just knowing how daunting Beth Page Black can be. Well, I mean, I've played Beth Page, uh, oh my goodness, um, I think it was 72 times leading up to that event because we have our New York State Open there every year. Mm -hmm. uh, we never play it to the length that we played it that week. But, um, but you know, so I'm very familiar with the golf course, the greens, the surrounds, where to hit it, where not to hit it. So, um, but you get it in a major championship. I played it on, on Sunday with Rich Beam, and we played, they had it tipped all the way back, which I've never played Beth Page Black, like one foot in the rough all the way back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And it was, <laughs> it was cold. It was like 55, and it was a little rainy. I mean, we were hipping three woods into every hole, and we're like, oh, my goodness, this, we're going to shoot. You know, I mean, <laughs> you yeah, know, right. I'm hitting three woods on the range after the round, like constantly, because I'm thinking it's just going to play. Anyway, the PGA of America did a great job of setting it up, and they moved some of the tees up and, and mixed it around. Kerry Haig and Mark Chetchot do an awesome job. And then, uh, you know, the, the tournament itself was wow, what a local. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I'm a local guy. I yeah. love that place. Uh, yeah. So it was uh, really cool to have all the New York support. Uh, you know, to work out at Long Island at Shinnecock, so I had the Long Island support. Now I'm from Westchester, and and then you know played some PGAs up in Rochester. So we had a lot of people coming out too. It was cool. It was a cool experience to be able to represent New York in the Met section like that in my club. Yeah, that was that was a special experience. And, and did that serve as like a, a motivation for you at that point? You know, performing that well in 2019 to really start ramping it up. Did it did it change your trajectory in any type of way uh, to get us to where you are now? Yeah, no, I mean, it gives you a little more confidence, obviously, because mm -hmm. at that point, I was a part time player. Um, you know, I'm a four director of golf. I'm teaching and coaching and and, and at Glen Arbor, you know, yeah. all the time. So it's like, it's not like I'm putting, you know, five or six hours a day, you know, in my game, that may have been like one or two, uh, right. you know, so, you know, I always looked at those as, as stepping stones and sort of, you know, you know, just, yeah, little stepping stones kind of along the way. But when you see your game against the greatest players in the world, uh, and I make sure I try to play with them the longest and all that stuff, because I want to see. Um, the only person I haven't played with uh, uh, yet that I really would like to, well, two people, would be um, Tiger Woods and Bernard Langer. Um, uh, and Phil Mickelson, of course. I haven't played with Phil yet. Golly, yeah. that would be cool. Well, how about that for some? Jeez. Yeah, how um, about that? Yeah. But uh, to see the game, you know, you can kind of get an understanding of what your game's like. You know, when you see the other guys play and you see your length and you see your shots and you see your putting and you see your chipping and you, 
and you're just like, well, there's okay. I just out hit this guy, or, or well, he's hitting seven, I'm hitting eight, and well, wait, wait a minute, you know, I just knocked yeah. it closer. So I mean, there's you know those little things just give you the the confidence because not not being in that world full time, I always had one week. So now I've got like 26 starts, right? <laughs> you know, which is instead of just one week, it's it's 26 starts, which is uh, golly, it's amazing. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be, you can, look, it's gonna be so asked, much fun. We asked you before if it's sunk in yet. I can tell it hasn't fully sunk yeah, in yet. Yeah. I can tell, <laughs> I can tell <laughs> from that right there. But you know, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a weird question to ask. But like you, because you, you do have these other responsibilities of being a teaching professional. You know, we look for silver linings in a way with something like COVID. Did COVID provide you maybe a little bit more space and time to work on your game or did it take you away from the game a little bit more? I'm, I'm wondering, you know, because I'm thinking about your day to day and it was weird for a lot of us when things were kind of shut down. Did you get to get out on the golf course? You know, was there any change for you really in 2020 in that way? No, I mean, except for there, you know, the club shut down because of code restrictions, but um, myself and, uh, as the director of golf and my head golf pro and our, and our starter and, and the owner, uh, you know, and the chef, we just basically ran the place and we couldn't even do any food at the, at the time chef, you know, stepped in after, but three of us. And then when they started opening up the laws, we just started letting people come out on the golf course. We had to, I mean, we were running a sanitizer. I mean, you, you know how crazy it got, yeah. we had sanitizer in every hole. We had, you know, I, it was protocol. I mean, my members were pulling their own bags. We weren't touching their stuff. Nobody knew anything. Right. Here I am at a five-star private club and I can't pull a member's bag. Right. I'm like, you know, yeah. some of my old, some of my lady members, you always want to take care of your, your lady members. And I was, I was standing there while they pulled the bag out of the car and, and just apologizing. And, and it was just the craziest yeah. times that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but no, it was during times when it was, um, you know, it was still light out. So, you know, I'd take my family. We spent a lot of time out at Glen Arbor um, and just took a couple clubs and a fishing pole and we'd hit shots and, you know, throw some, throw some lines in the ponds and, uh, the golf course was still being maintained. So, you know, my daughter was playing and I was playing and we were just having fun out there. So, um, you know, I, I love being with my family. That's going to be, mm. you know, one of the harder parts of this uh, next year is, is being sure. away from them. Um, but you know, I've got a, I got a sport group that can support it. So we're good to go. Perfect. And we're going to touch on that a little yeah. bit more in a second. I also want to talk to you about some of those names you just mentioned, like Bernhard Langer, Phil Mickelson, and ask you about some of those tournaments coming up. But I want to take a quick word from our sponsor and we'll be back with a little bit more from Rob in a second. Hey guys, the evolution of the T-Series advances Titleist even further in their mission to produce the best irons in the world. New materials, new processes, and new refinements power new precision that must be felt to believe. Each model is an instrument of exacting performance based on Titleist R&D to Torpros all the way to you. The Titleist T-Series is precision made, precision played, and we had the opportunity, speaking of which, oh, we, yeah. I mean, how about this? <laughs> yeah. We got fit, we were talking to Rob Labritz here, we got fit at Glen Harbor for the new T-Series irons just last summer, been gaming them. They have been, without a doubt, hands down, the best irons we've ever played. And if, you, uh, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you do so because we're going to be running through our full what's in the bag oh, yeah. in the next oh, two yeah. weeks, and we're going to be diving in even deeper, hitting the clubs in the simulator here and giving you guys our firsthand experience of why they've been performing so well for us but don't just take our word for it make this the year that you go out there and try them for yourself get fit for the new t-series irons you're not going to regret it there is something in that line for every golfer and you'll love the way they feel so Definitely. go check them out and rob was a big reason we got it done there he was on that tech string setting it all up with andy inman and, yes. and the whole maintenance crew of getting this during a close day rob wasn't even there he was traveling but he was still took care of everything another way rob has come another through. way yeah. another way he's come through uh so big thanks there and big thanks to foot joy uh it's cold out it's december we're, we're turning the corner into january but it doesn't mean we have to stop playing golf in fact i, I kind of want to squeeze out there in the coming weeks nine holes man i think let's we go. can do it there's no snow um, in the round let's go there's no snow we layer up you know we make every day playable and that's a big thanks to foot joy and all of the garments that they provide for us and for you um take a look at some of these things the phase one base layer i keep talking about these but i'm loving these they're appropriate for right now it's that thermal base that goes 
uh, beneath that polo shirt. You could throw over it the hybrid hoodie if you want to just have that newer look of wearing the hoodie on course, which I love. I'm wearing one of the FootJoy hoodies right now. This is a different style of hoodie, but uh, I just love their material. Uh, the Hydro Tour jacket, love this jacket. By the way, it folds up to like this. It's like, yeah. you know, like a football, like a Nerf football. You could shove it in the side pocket. You take it out, you put it on. It's basically like second skin to you. You don't even feel it when you swing and it's 100% waterproof. So why wouldn't you have that in your bag? Check that out. And all their other accessories, the hats, the knit hats, the stay soft winter gloves, uh, and just fresh regular pair of gloves, which you need throughout the winter. So take a look, go to footjoy.com, shop now for yourself or for anybody uh, for the winter season. And guys, play golf as long as humanly possible. I had somebody right? hit me up in my comments on Instagram and they said, he said, how are you guys still playing golf? It's December in New York. I said, footjoy, baby, make every day playable. Right. That's it. Yep. All right, guys, let's get back to our interview with Rob LaBritz. All right, we're back to the golf podcast here with Champions Tour player Rob. Can I call you that, Rob? That Champions Tour yeah, player. Yeah, I, right? like I, I could say I like that. that. Yeah. Got a nice Tour, ring. I got to a it. beautiful little ring. Yeah, <laughs> Champions Tour player Rob Labritz. All right, Rob. So you touched on this earlier. You're clearly. I mean, you're 50 now. You're clearly at the peak of your game. You're like a fine. You're like a bottle of wine. It's just getting better as you age, right? Do you think, honestly, I want you to be honest, that these guys like Langer, McCarron, are, are their knees going to be shaking a little bit when you step out there? Or what? Coming for their money a little bit? Yeah, you, yeah. are you coming for their money or what? Um, you know, I don't think they're going to be shaking at all. I, I, you know, I think they're going to go do their thing like they always do, and I'm going to go in there and do my thing. And, and you know, I, I'm not trying to beat them. I'm trying to play the best golf that I can. Sure. And if I can play the best golf, then I know that I'll uh, whatever happens will happen. I. You know, it's not about going out there and beating these guys. I mean, obviously it is, but you're, you're not mm -hmm. looking at it that way. Yeah. Um, and I want I want everybody to play good because you know what happens? Your game gets elevated when you play with better players. Right. So I, I, I you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to cop out of this this answer. That's how I truly <laughs> feel, <Yep>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> honestly. And, uh, you know, that's the way it is. Yeah, but, well, uh, we, we rib a little bit, but it's spoken <laughs> yeah. like a true professional. And there's a reason why you're where you are mm. so and and I, and I love that i i mean we even say that on our level we feel it when we go out and play with people who are just a little bit better than us we see things and we see things that we might not have thought of approaches of way to, to play a shot um whatever it may be so it's it's really cool and interesting to hear that it works that way all the way at the top you're just constantly getting better by playing with better better golfers and great golfers and i love hearing that it's kind of refreshing in a lot of ways yeah, you definitely don't want to be intimidated, and, and I'm not I'm not scared to ask questions. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I've asked I've played with a lot of top players, and I've probably asked a lot of dumb questions, and they probably looked at me like, like what is this? But they've answered my questions, and um, you know, I've learned from it, uh, which has helped me become a better player and, and just understand uh, this next chapter. I mean, listen, I'm going I'm going to go on. I go from being a club pro from 31 years to I mean, I, I spent a year or two on the Canadian tour, but going to like traveling every week, it's going to be. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to get used to all this, how much to play, how much to practice, you know, my workouts, you know, food, sleep. I, I've got a lot of ideas and things, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a, definitely a, an, an adaptation. Oh, I can imagine. Same, you know? And there's a lot of camaraderie from <laughs> right. what we know on that tour. We had Scott McCarron on the podcast uh, a couple months right ago. Right after he won. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. he was talking about some of the just just the the vibe on it and, and the camaraderie between the guys and he says some of the just even the rounds that they play on like tuesdays you remember he was yes, telling us yes. how much fun that they have out there so uh i'm sure that'll be be great for you but but what you know so let's get into that like talking about changing life a little bit and touring like what what now like what kind of goes into picking what events you're gonna play and and just kind of balancing that life of of coaching practicing traveling family life i mean it's a it is a big shift so how do you plan to attack that yeah that's a great question um and that's the question that i've been spending most of my time you know sitting here trying to figure out um you know i the way I look at it is I've, I've been given an opportunity to play in all these events. So I've got to manage my time and I've got to manage my, uh, you know, my body, so to speak, and make sure that I'm rested. I mean, that's, that seems to be the biggest thing and obviously staying away from getting sick because we don't want that to happen either. Um, but you know, I've signed up, I signed up for the first three events. Um, I'm going to see how three weeks play out. Uh, and, uh, then I'll have a week off after that. Um, and then after that, I believe is the trophy is signed. Uh, which is in Morocco, um, which, you know, we'll see where the COVID uh, where it ends yeah. up there. I mm -hmm. mean, if I can travel freely and feel good and not have to quarantine and all that stuff, I mean, I'll, I'll probably go play that. 
Uh, and then if, um, uh, if not, I'll have another week of rest. Um, and the weeks of rest will be, will be nice because I'll be here with my family at Glen Arbor, New York. Um, and also, you know, at the club, which for me, I, I just, you know, it's, it's a fabric in me. I, you know, I, I just love being there. I love talking about the, the culture of the club and, and changes on the golf course and, you know, just hiring great people. I, I that's, that's just me. So, uh, on my weeks off, I'm going to come back and do that. For me, that's refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, some people like to fish, some people, and I like to do that stuff too, but, uh, just to kind of grab my, my normalcy, uh, at the club, uh, you know, teach a few lessons. Uh, I'm sure I'll have some good, some good things to, uh, to, to teach some people and then, um, you know, kind of go out on, on the tour and, and, you know, just try to find that flow and that rhythm of working out and practicing and doing pro-ams and, and eating and resting. And I mean, I think that's the, that's the magic formula. Um, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm at home, do, going to the club is relaxing for me. Uh, mm-hmm. it's not, we don't, we have, we don't have, it's not a demanding club. It's, it's a, it's just, it, it runs itself. It's a great place to come and forget about your, go- uh, forget about your problems or whatever you're doing for a while, you know, and play some golf. So it's, uh, we just try to provide the best service we can, which is, you know, it's part of me. It's part of who I am. Uh, mm-hmm. so that's how I'm going to, that's how I'm going to do it. And then we're going to make alterations, uh, you know, on top of that and just see how it's working. I, I don't think there's a, any magic pill. I think, uh, there's a lot of people out there probably say, oh, I can't do both. He can't do both, but you know what? I've been told I couldn't do both since the beginning of time. (laughs) And you know what? I got a chance to do both now, which is kind of cool. (laughs) So, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see where, where it leads. I know the PGA classification, uh, changes, I guess PGA America told me, uh, in in February when I peg it up in that first event, I, I moved from an A4 director of golf to a, uh, to an A3 tour player. So that makes me ineligible for the national club pro. Uh, championship, which will you know probably make me ineligible for the PGA Championship unless I win the Senior PGA Championship and get into the PGA Championship that way. Gotcha. So um, uh, okay. Hey, well, there's hey, still a path. There's still there's a path. Still there a is path. a path. There you so go. you're telling me there's a chance. Listen, <laughs> all Rob needs is a path, and he'll get there. That's incredible. <laughs> that is great. So that that's cool to be able to still maintain, you know, at the at the club because Glen Arbor it is a, it's just a terrific club. We've we've had a, our, our limited exposure the couple times we've been there. We've just been absolutely impressed. That even uh, most recently getting fit at the uh, well, there we're just showing on screen a picture of us with the the 19th hole, which there it is, is back there. Yep. Uh, just oh, yeah. as fun oh, yeah. as it gets, as fun a shot of as it gets, but even getting to do our fitting, uh, there at your, your training and practice facility, you just have a state no, of top notch. absolute yep. top notch facility. Mm. So, uh, certainly don't blame you for wanting to, to keep your hat <laughs> hung over there as long as possible. But the other big yeah, piece of that, obvious, the, I mean, family is the other big piece of that, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I know we started mentioning a little bit earlier, a, a big part of even helping to get here is having that support of family, no doubt about oh, yeah. it. And I want to hear you talk oh. a little bit about that. But then there's also, there's no doubt there is the, the difficulties that come with, with travel. We feel it ourselves, both Mike Mike and I both have young daughters ourselves. And uh, every time we travel for, for golf, which is, is, you know, limited comparison to what, what you've got ahead of you, it, it can be difficult to, to leave. So, um, yeah, what's the, been the family's take and response there? So, uh, you know, we've planned for this, um, and we've always talked about it and now we think about it logically. I mean, we have, um, my son is 18, he's at LSU. So, um, you know, he's, uh, kind of on his own, right. Sort of. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my, I have an, uh, eight year old daughter who's in third grade. And then an 11 month old daughter who's not in school yet. So, um, we're going to, uh, just let Ryan finish out her third grade. Uh, you know, I'll probably travel alone at that point. And then once Ryan finishes school, um, then, uh, the family's going to come out on tour with me oh, that's uh, nice. so they get to experience cool. this as well. So, uh, yeah. it's going to be a, a family thing. We're going to, we've been waiting for this and, and, uh, uh, I love spending time with them. So it's, it's going to be a home run. Great. What? Yeah. What an incredible way to a spend that kind of quality time with family and, and B use it as, as I mean, something that not many kids get is to get to, to see, you know, the country and see the world in that way. Um, I think in, in a lot of ways, it's, it's something that you're, you're giving them that they just, it, it, such a unique experience. Oh, yeah. I think that's incredible. You had, um, hopefully it well rounds them out a little bit more, you know, definitely travel though. 
Yeah, for yeah. sure. For yeah. sure. I mean, just those experiences and experiencing different places and, and things like that. Uh, again, it's something that a lot of us don't even get to do in a lifetime, let alone in our childhood. Um, and, and your son, he, he, he mentioned he plays as well. And you, um, you won the Massachusetts uh, Open Golf Championship with him on the bag, right? So he's been involved in, in your journey a bit. Yeah, we, we won the Massachusetts Open, the Westchester Open, and the Rhode Island Open all, to, all together. He's catted for me four times. And we made it through the pre-qualifier for the um, – well, it was one of the ones down in, down in Florida, uh, one of the PGA Tour ones. I don't remember, like the Doral or Honda or something, uh, yeah. together when he was on the bag. So we have this great little uh, camaraderie out there. I don't know. He, he kind of brings out the best of me. Um, I actually joked with him. I said, hey, listen, uh, you want to forego college for a year and come out on, on tour with me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right, right, that, right, right. It's like a, uh, like a Stuart laughed. Sink family story right there. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, cool. We have we have a lot of fun together. He loves being out there. He's a he's a good golfer. Uh, I wish he I wish he loved it a little more like me, but it's okay because yeah. he uh, he still he can play the game. He can break eighty. Um, yeah. and he's got a beautiful golf swing good touch around the greens i'm like oh man yeah. you know, <laughs> just just wanted a little more but anyway, right. it is what it is so yeah, uh, yeah. that's great still incredible yeah. um <laughs> the other thing that obviously we've got we got to talk about before we let you go is, is the fitness piece too you know we, mm. we talked a little bit about um family and, and, and the work that you've put in to get it. But, but fitness is, is like a core component that I've, I've heard, I don't remember where it was, but, uh, I heard a, a soundbite from somewhere on social media where you were saying that it was really a kind of a cornerstone and a big focus for you to stay fit and be able to, to keep up at the level that you want to keep up. So, um, mm -hmm. w what exactly does that, what's that picture look like for you? You know, how, how much of, of your routine is encompassed by, by strictly by through fitness routine? Yeah, every day. Um, and, and it's been for the past 13 or 14 years, um, you know, every day, you know, where yeah. we do uh, it's functional movement, balance, um, core uh, activation. I do a lot of Viper work. I love my Peloton. Um, I've got a trainer, Curtis Jackson, who is just great at he's just great I mean, yeah. which we, we, uh, he's awesome i i can't i mean he, he has me doing things that um you know with this with this viper machine that it just blows my mind and i can just feel how strong and tight my core is and um i feel how loose i am and i and knock on wood um you know i'm 50 i've had a few injuries in my life but nothing ever sustaining you know i, I broke my knee skiing once i had ro a rotator cuff surgery or a, yeah something cleared out my thyroid out but other than that my body's been good i haven't had back problems neck problems i've been super lucky super blessed and whatever we're doing we we focus on trying to keep me the strongest at my weakest points uh -huh. uh, and uh, we've been doing that for years so uh you know I'm, I'm doing a lot of lightweight stuff and extensions that um you know my body's in its weakest moment and it's and it's still holding out and being strong so that i attribute a lot of my success to 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 him and what he's taught me over the years so in a lot of ways it kind of mirrors just your own golf improvement just finding those weak points and making them a little bit better yeah, that's exactly it. It's almost feeling like it's a, he always calls it a, he goes, you want to be a Bugatti. He goes, you want to have that finely tuned engine with everything else handmade perfectly, never going to break or, you know, <laughs> so. Yeah, anyway. I like that. <laughs> I, I mean, I wouldn't know what a Bugatti, I've seen <laughs> yeah, it on the yeah. internet, but I. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> have you gotten any better at making those protein shakes? I, know. <laughs> I still laugh about the story. <laughs> When we first met you, you were just determined to get that protein powder in that water bottle. I said, this guy must be really big and working out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So I, I learned to make funnels out of scorecards now. So there you, you go. use oh, scorecards, stick it in the end. It takes a couple, you know, sometimes <laughs> just takes me a little longer. <laughs> That's great. Well, you're definitely determined. And, and and speaking of like back on the, your scheduling, you talked about 26 weeks, 26 events, family, all that stuff. I think you forgot about that round with us. Uh, can oh, you yeah. squeeze that in at any point? Maybe in the fall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it, we'll make it happen, especially on one of those weeks off. We'll, we'll get your, we'll get you out there and have, have you boys out there for a champions tour, uh, you know, uh, oh, yeah. lesson. <laughs> oh yeah. And that course, let me tell you, Glenn Arbor, like Frank said, we didn't get the chance to play it. We just took a couple cracks at the 19th hole, but that course looks beautiful and I cannot wait to play it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is. Like, it is my, Super's uh, doing a great job. Sorry. Oh, didn't yeah, no, job. It, no, it no is. worries. Like I said, it just goes back to, like you said, you know, playing with, with, with great golfers makes you better. And then just, it, just the opportunity to get out there and play with you sometime would be just a, an honor. We'd be really, really excited to really do cool. it. Um, but anyway, it. 
I know you're busy. We'll, we'll let you go in a minute. I just want to, again, thank you for taking the time to come on the show, speak with us. And uh, what we can tell you is that we will we'll be following closely, rooting for you hard in those first couple events. Uh, just really, like I said, truly one of the biggest, uh, most awe-inspiring, motivational uh, stories to come out of golf this year. And I just can't wait to see where you continue to take it. So uh, wish you the best of luck. And, and thanks again for coming on the show. Uh, gents, thanks for having me. You guys have a great thing going, uh, in class guys, and I'll do this anytime. We'll talk to you guys soon. Appreciate awesome. that, Rob. Thank you. Thanks, you Rob. You got it, boys. You got it. See you soon. All right, guys. Like I said, I told you it was going to be inspirational. I mean, you can just you can hear it in Rob's voice, and if you're watching the show on uh, our new YouTube channel uh, or in the Golf Is the app or on Facebook, you can um, I'm sure see it. Uh, he's just a guy that it's it's very hard to not root for for Rob. It really is, and we didn't hit on this, but I, I think a lot of us saw it who who paid attention to Rob's journey of, of when he broke down in tears. And he was on the phone with his wife after the 18th hole or yeah. 72nd hole, I should call it. That um, hits you right in the feels. It hits you in the feels. And, and you could see it in his face. I mean, the key moment of that interview right there is when he he says, and now I get 26 to, you know, to, to pick from or to, to play in. I mean, that's, you could see right there, like his whole world just changed and he just thought of that again. And yeah. it's just like, it still hasn't sunk in. <laughs> so, right. But I'll tell cool. you what, I mean, not only is this a cool, inspiring story, but I think it's something that all of us as golfers can take away and learn from this of A, really setting goals for yourself mm -hmm. and, 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 and making the commitment to work towards those goals and celebrating them a, as you go. You know, it was right. great to see him celebrating that. And, and it just shows too, again, it's, it's a game that you can really stick with for a long time. Here's a guy who, who has reached his goal of, of playing on the tour like that at age 50. And arguably you could say he's in some of the best shape of his life Definitely. at age 50. So I think it's, it's one thing that a, it, it helps a little bit and it gives the inspiration to people at all different ages to be able to do what you want to do but I think also just what can be learned was his approach I, I wanted him to expand a little bit more on that 40 second because I think we've talked about this here on the podcast as soon as he before. said it I was intrigued yeah absolutely it's just finding those ways to just uh find the space where you can kind of click it on into that focus, yeah. but not burden yourself with trying to have that high level of focus at every minute. And, you know, he had talked about kind of coming out of it after a shot and just enjoying where you are, enjoying yeah. what you're doing. You're out there playing golf. You Think know, about enjoy it. that of, of not being able to celebrate a great shot or get angry about a bad shot, being able to turn that off. That's difficult. Yeah, it's that not easy. Difficult. It's not easy, but it shows that it, it, it can pay off. And I, I even liked what he was saying about how uh, half the time he doesn't even know where he's at score-wise. Yeah, it's crazy. You right? know, and I, I really, I attach that in a lot of ways myself because I try not to think about it because I find that if I do, it's just too easy to mistakenly uh, adjust my play. And, and often what got you there is what you get away from mm -hmm. when you are playing well. So I think there's a lot to be learned from it. Uh, I, this is definitely not the first uh, you guys will be hearing from Rob. We're gonna re we plan to do a lot more with them. I think we've really had a lot of fun in any type of um, anytime our paths have crossed. So yep. I'm excited to do more with Rob in the in the cur current uh, in the coming weeks and months. And as for of course, we will get out there and play with him. But here's to rooting for him. I, I really hope to see him perform well amongst those big names on the champions. I store. think he'll do well. I'm really pulling for a victory because you know, it, it's, I, I think he has it in him. I think he's got a few in him. I'll be honest. Uh, I, I would I not really do the way he won that, that Q school event. I yep. would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. Look so, out, boys. Look out. That's everything we have for you guys this week. You can get to the show notes by going to uh, golfacy.com slash episode 408. Of course, we'll link to all of Rob's social media there so you guys can give him a follow, follow along with his journey, his continued journey, because in a lot of ways, like I said, this is him achieving that goal, but it's also just the beginning. That's As right. he said, there's still a lot more for him to accomplish, and we, we hope he does. So again, you get to the show notes by going to golfacy.com slash episode 408, and we'll see everybody again next week week.